Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of Kingdom of the Beast 666. Uh, we did economic last time. And this time it's going to be the governmental and military arm of the kingdom of the beast. So let's go back and do a little history here. The Lord still judges his nations for falling away and doing the opposite of everything that he says. Now, during World War I, which was a little over 100 years ago, uh, there was what they call a Serbian nationalist, but that's a lie. He was a Jay who was from Serbia, and he shot Archduke Francis Ferdinand, and they claim that is the start of World War I. And uh, a lot of shenanigans went on. Uh, of course, the United States was selling war munitions to uh, England to kill Germans. And uh, there was a ship called the Lusitania, which was a passenger ship carrying war munitions cargo. And the German U-boats, their subs, uh, Germany took out a full-page ad in the New York newspapers where the ship was docked and told people, do not go on the ship because if we find it, we're going to sink it. And uh, it was full of war munitions destined to kill German soldiers. So, um, the German ships found it and sank it. And then they used that as an excuse for the United States to enter World War I. And you know why they never uh, took a look at the Lusitania? just like, well, like they did with the Titanic, because it was full of explosives, and they didn't want to take a chance that the ship would blow up. You know, if you got explosives that are uh, watertight, and you knock something over and it hits a warhead, kaboom, possibly. So that's why they've never uh, explored the Lusitania. They know where it is. I'm surprised the ship didn't blow up from being torpedoed, but I don't know. Maybe it was in a different part of the ship, I don't know. But, uh, you know, uh, from World War I, you had the Communist Revolution in Russia, the Soviets. And if you don't know who financed communism in Russia, well, it was Wall Street, USA. Um, and if you don't know it, Wall Street is, well, let's just say it's full of uh, J's. Uh, New York City is about 25% J's. Oh, yeah, it is, really. Goldman Sachs, anybody, you know. But they finance communism. And millions of Christians died under Soviet communism in in Russia in the 20s and the 30s. Uh, they actually did uh, famines against people. They went to the farms, stole all the food, uh, and they're, well, you know what happens when you kill all your farmers? Uh, let's see, what happens when you kill all your farmers? Oh, okay, food doesn't get, uh, crops don't get planted and they don't get harvested. Plus, they had bad weather. So there was a general famine in, well, what is now Ukraine. Ukraine is the breadbasket of Europe. It really is. It's like our Nebraska and um, what have you. You know, Kansas, Nebraska. Yeah, that is our breadbasket of the United States, supposedly. But... Uh, they kill the farmers, seize their crops, let the people and the animals starve, and uh, 
and the people at the top under communism live like kings and everybody else live like, well, they starved or were murdered. And uh, just not a good situation. But uh, yeah, no pre-trib rapture for those people. You know, they, they, they were horribly murdered. Um, and the funny thing is, it was uh, Christians that ones were murdered. But if you want to really read about the origins of communism, may I suggest you get the book Behind Communism. There, are, The author's name was Frank Britton, two T's, B-R-I-T-T-O-N. He does an excellent job of explaining who's behind communism. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of the John Birch Society, but there's supposed to be a anti-communist uh, group in the United States. Uh, there was it's named after a evangelist named John Birch. Yeah, he was a uh, went to China to evangelize the uh, Chinese, which I don't believe God told him to do that, but he felt needed to do that. Well, the communists got a hold of him, and they killed him. You know, why would you kill a Christian missionary? Oh, we, we hate Christians. Yeah. So, millions of Christians suffered and died under communism. But uh, we're going to... But when the... Uh, when the Israeli state was created in 1948, um, the... Uh, you know who's were crying that communist Russia would not let them emigrate, leave Russia to go to the Israeli state. But the Christians couldn't say anything because they had all, almost all of them had been murdered. So, yeah. So, World War I, England, France, United States, Germany, and Russia were all fighting each other. Well, not all each other, but um, Austria, Germany was fighting against Russia, France, and England, and the United States. So, uh, the deal is well, Western people were killing Western people. And uh, they created what was called the League of Nations after the war. Because they said, oh, if only we'd have a world government, we could prevent future wars. But the United States was full of, somewhat full of believers back then. And they said, no, we are not going to join the United Nations or the League of Nations. We're not going to join. Because it's world government condemned in the Bible. People actually read and knew the Bible back then to an extent. A lot better than they do now. So we wouldn't join. And then um, not us not the US not joining the League of Nations and not having a strong world government was blamed for World War II. Now what I find interesting is uh, in the 1880s, 1890s, uh, the United States and England, uh, well, England mainly, did not want to pay their people to build ships, so they shipped a lot of that stuff over to Japan. Now, remember, feudal Japan had samurai. Perhaps you've seen the last samurai movie. Uh, what, what's his name? Uh, Tom Cruise. Guy's had a heck of a career. He's been a samurai. He's been a jet fighter pilot, a spy, uh, whatever. Yeah. But um, instead of paying their own people to build ships with a decent wage, they went to Japan and paid them slave labor wages. Free trade, anyone? Now we're doing it to China, right? With China. Well, naval engineers went over to Japan from England 
and taught them how to build modern warships that they built for England. Well, Japan said, hey, maybe we need to build some of these for ourselves, which they did. In 1905, Japan attacked the Imperial Russian Empire's fleet in Asia and totally whipped their butts because the Russian fleet was obsolete. Their crews were peasants that had poorly trained. The Japanese had modern warships, highly trained and skilled people, and they had been taught modern topic, taught modern tactics by the uh, English. And you know, the English Navy uh, at the begin, uh, you know, from for probably 300 years up until up until close to the end of World War II. They had the largest navy in the world. Yeah. Uh, at the end of World War II, U.S. had the largest navy in the world, but uh, things are changing. So, in 1905, the British had trained the Japanese, a militaristic people, how to fight. And in 1905, they, uh, the Japanese naval forces just totally wiped out the Russian military forces. A lot of people don't know it, but there was a communist revolution in Russia in 1905. They were called the Mensheviks. It failed, but the Russian emperor, uh, the king of Russia, the Tsar, he, I don't know, I guess he didn't learn his lesson. But in 1917, the, uh, the Bolsheviks, who were competitors with the Mensheviks were uh, successful and overthrew the Tsar. And the Tsar had actually, the King of Russia had actually stepped down, but they killed him anyways and him and his family so that uh, there wouldn't be any chance of a comeback. And then they started their murderous spree. Uh, so then... Yeah, that happened in the middle of World War One, towards the middle. So France, England, and the United States fought Germany and uh, killed. Uh, well, we we were killing each other like idiots when we shouldn't have been doing that. But until you know who's behind the scene pulling the strings and controlling the banking industry. Uh, nothing makes sense. Makes sense to me, but uh, once you understand how banking works, well, guess who owned the um, industries that made war munitions things? You should read the book by General, uh, United States Marine General, Smedley, S-M-E-D-L-E-Y, Butler, B-U-T-L-E-R, um, his, his book, War is a Racket, very small, I think it's only about 30 pages, um, it explains it's a racket, and uh, he tried to warn everybody to, for us to stay out of World War II, but uh, he went to the Veterans Hospital and died just before we got into World War II. What, what a coincidence. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's see. Kind of, there's a lot of things going on, and I'm not putting them in any particular order, but uh, when, the, um, when the communists killed all the farmers in Russia, uh, and they were having food shortages, and the people were in danger uh, of rioting and revolting and getting rid of their communist masters. Um, the United States sent food, aid and comfort to the enemy. And then we had what was called the Dust Bowl in the United States, where it just didn't rain and all the crops, our crops died. You know, God was sending us a message, but we weren't listening. So... What we should have been sending was uh, firearms to the Russian people so they could kill the 
you know who's. Um, in Austria, there was a group called uh, Ant Tifa, and they took over the capital of Austri Austria. I think it was Vienna. I think it's Vienna. I'm not sure. Um, I don't even want to look it up, but I, I know this from history. After World War I, uh, the communists in Austria took over the capital for three days. And all the World War I veterans, uh, they, they looked at what had happened in Russia, and they said, uh, no, this ain't happening to us here. We ain't going to put up with this. You know, in Russia, the peasants didn't have any firearms. Well, in Austria, they did. So everybody grabbed their pistols, their, their rifles, their hunting rifles. And um, the communists had taken over the capital for three days. Well, the World War I veterans, <laughs> let me tell you something. You, you don't ever want to have to face uh, an army trained veteran with a rifle in his hand. I mean, especially a guy that's a hunter, that the food on the plate demands uh, marksmanship. Well, when the smoke cleared and the people had retaken their capital and the gun smoke had cleared, guess what they found? A lot of dead Jays. A lot of dead Jays. Matter of fact, it was almost all, yeah. But you can't, you don't hear about this stuff anymore. You can look it up. This was after World War I. So, is there a reason why uh, they want gun control? Oh, absolutely. They've learned their lesson. You can't leave guns in the hands of uh, the people. You know, they talk about people's rights and power of the people, but that's just a, uh, a smoke screen and a saying because they know what happens when people get fed up and they grab their firearms and uh, take care of the evildoers and so there there's a reason why they want to have you know control over who owns what property yeah and uh, so all right well, what else oh okay and then afterwards uh, the League of Nations pretty much failed uh, they claim to prevent World War two of course, in 1929 and the 1930s, we had the worldwide global depression, which uh, different people theorize why it happened. But uh, basically, what happens is when, um, well, in 1933 34, the U.S. government decreed that gold coins that were legal tender for decades and decades and decades were to be turned into the banks and they'll give you a little piece of paper that says twenty dollars on it you know yeah a one ounce gold coin was worth about twenty dollars yeah figure that one out so there was a uh the banks withdrew all the money out of circulation well guess what when people don't have any money uh, there's a depression. Most of the Americans during that time period owned their homes. That's not true today. People were able to grow gardens. That's not true today. People live in subdivisions where the homeowners associations will not allow you to grow food or the, um, the cities won't allow you to grow food in your yard. World War II, they called them victory gardens. So what happens if uh, there's a depression? People have no money and they can't buy food. Yeah, you get the idea. The same thing that happened in Russia during the Soviet when they killed all the farmers. Yeah, mass starvation. Now, the deal is... Uh, now, in Germany, uh, after World War I, they made Germany pay reparations for the war, for the war, 
And basically, the reparations was like three or four times what the entire country was worth. So they were, they were devastated. Absolutely devastated. And uh, their money was worthless because the government just kept printing paper money. Um, I mean, it, it was so bad. Uh, used to take a wheelbarrow of money to buy a loaf of bread. And people were using bills to for toilet paper because it was cheaper to, to get the paper money than to use to buy use it to buy toilet paper. And not only that, there was a story about a guy that he couldn't get the wheelbarrow of money into the store through the door. And somebody had stolen the wheelbarrow, but they dumped the money. Yeah, the wheelbarrow was more valuable than the stacks of money inside the wheelbarrow. People were wallpapering their house with money, paper money, which, you know, paper money always collapses. It always does. And they know that. And that's how they're going to eventually implement 666. They're going to crash things and they have a solution. So there was a lot of things going on. But one quarter of Germany was homeless. People didn't have jobs. People didn't have food. I mean, that's what led to the rise of, of uh, Germany and the, I guess you could say, the Nazi party. Now, some people love Hitler, but uh, I don't know. I knew people that had survived World War II when I was a teenager growing up, and they lived in Denmark that was under German occupation, and they said it was brutal. I mean, they said that they were absolutely, uh, well, let's just say they were glad to leave Europe and come to America to get as far away from Germany as they could because they, they said it was absolutely horrible uh, the way the Germans mistreated the blonde-haired, blue-eyed Nordic people of Denmark. They didn't, they were like horrified at how they were treated. So, you know, when people tell me how great uh, Nazi Germany was, well, I knew people that lived through the war that told me stories that I didn't, I, I just could hardly believe. So, you know, tell me how great they were, you know. Now, I know the Russians were probably worse, but, you know, what can I tell you? But I, I know that leaders are not elected. Leaders are selected. They're selected by the wicked people at the top. And why do they hate Germany so much? Well, Germany had expelled the you-know-whos uh, because of Martin Luther. Martin Luther translated... I think the New Testament into German. I'm not sure if he did the whole New Test, uh, the whole Bible or not. But uh, he translated in, in the, the Bible into German. It was printed by Gutenberg, which uh, literally translates to Good Mountain. You've ever heard of an iceberg, an ice mountain? Yeah, and Guten means good, so Good Mountain. And uh, so they were printing New Testaments. Uh, Martin Luther asked the princes or kings or Germany and said, these uh, satanic people, you know, the ones that killed Jesus, their, their descendants, they said, these people curse Jesus every day and every Sabbath day in their, their uh, places of worship i guess you could say i don't even want to say the word because tube but uh he says you're giving aid and comfort to the uh, enemy people that hate and curse jesus and they call mary a whore that had sex with well either a roman soldier because she was a prostitute for 20 or 30 pieces of silver i forget which or uh she was doing one of satan's fallen angels depending upon which uh, rab by you listen to or read. 
And the Prince of Germany was disgusted at what he heard, and he ordered them expelled. All of them. Get out of here. We're not going to let you use our roads, live among us, and curse my Lord and Savior. Unlike the United States does today, and the UK, and the European Union, and uh, where we bring them in. Yeah. And allow them to live here so they can curse us and our Savior. And uh, when I hear uh, people tell me that I'm being uh, wrong about this, well, you know what? I know one thing. When the beast comes, they will be the one of the first to stand in line to take his mark and to worship him. I know that for a fact. And uh, let them suffer their fate. It'll it'll happen. Which is why I uh, which is why I'm very skeptical about uh, people knowing my business and things because they're gonna turn on you they really will I can see it happening Jesus warned about it Matthew 24 over and over and over so uh, so basically the depression happened. People were hungry, didn't have shoes, didn't have clothes. Uh, they lost their homes. You know, people were, people, farmers and people that took homes, loans, uh, lost their farms and their homes and were wandering around. You know, uh, you ever heard of hobos riding the tra uh, rails? They would hop on trains. They go to different places looking for work, and there was no work. My father, uh, his family, they grew up during the Depression, and Dad was very young, but Dad hated chicken. He says if they ever did eat meat, it was chicken, and it was only once or twice a week. They couldn't afford it. They had no money. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's going to happen again. Now, everybody knows, all right, well, they had World War II, killed more people uh, of our people, all right? And by the way, everything that Japan used to attack Pearl Harbor was given to them by England or the United States. Yes, we sold, the United States sold Japan the steel and the equipment to manufacture all the stuff that they made to attack us. Case in point, free trade with China. We are giving all the stuff that they needed, the technology, the machinery, the and everything they needed to build a world-class military. In the 1980s, China was a third world nothing country. Now they have a modern deep water Navy. They have aircraft carriers. Uh, they have more submarines than the United States does. And we gave them all this. Yeah, think about that. You know, there's a thing. You know, when you uh, ignore the Lord, do everything he says not to do, and all the things he says to do, you don't. Read the book of Judges. God will send wickedness and evil things upon his people for disobedience. And people, it's coming. Everybody thought all oh, the Assyrians and the Babylonians and Rome were bad. Ha! Huh. That's going to be nothing compared to what's coming. The final beast system? Bad, man. It's going to be bad. And all the Christians that flee the cities maybe they're going to meet people like you out there and they're going to say why is all this evil coming upon us and you can tell them oh simple you tolerated all the evil stuff that the lord told you to get rid of because you listened to your masonic zionist pastor that told you to ignore all the saint plain sayings of jesus Jesus told you what to do with child rapists. 
rapists, period. Murderers. The Bible tells you what to do with murderers. People that curse Jesus. You bless them. You let them live among you. You gave them aid and comfort. You asked the Lord to bless these devils. And then somebody like me that tried to warn, you rebuked and blocked and deleted my comments. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a reason why uh, they deleted over 10,000 of my subscribers one day. Yeah. It's amazing. So you can tell them. You know, they should have, uh, when they were trying to teach your elementary school children about the, uh, the uh, L and the B and the uh, G and T agenda, you should have taken matters and got rid of, yeah, and the politicians and the, you know, but the church wouldn't do that. No, uh-uh. No, they, they, they wanted to tolerate evil. And then evil spreads like a cancer until the evil will not tolerate the church. And the Lord is going to allow it. All right, so League of Nations. Uh, they were supposedly powerless to stop World War I or World War II after World War I. So it was disbanded. And then after World War II ended, Germany is in ruins, millions and millions dead, our people dead, because the satanic children of the devil uh, had plotted this whole thing and were successful because the Lord allowed it. And anytime you hear somebody say that anybody can be saved, you know that you're listening to an idiot that's either works for the devil or has a very, very, very basic knowledge of the Bible and shouldn't even be teaching. Because the Old Testament clearly points out that there are entire families that cannot be saved and will not be saved. And of course, they'll take letters written to us and apply it to them. You know, God only made his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Esau was rejected. Ishmael was rejected. They don't have any part in the kingdom. They don't. None. Zero. I got tons of Bible studies proving it from the Bible. Not my opinion. The Bible. But, you know, you got your Billy Goat Grams and telling people to run off to China and India and all those other places that are cursed instead of knocking on the doors here at home. I knew a girl that uh, lived next door to some people I was staying with. She wanted to be an evangelist and go to Korea, South Korea, and evangelize and teach them about Jesus. And I talked to some of the neighbors, and the neighbors didn't even know she was an evangelist. She never even went to her next-door neighbors, knocked on the door, and said, I'd like to tell you about Jesus Christ. But you're going to run off to Korea when your neighbor's right next door? You don't even talk to them? Really? I mean, this is the stupidity of the modern church world. We need... We need evangelists for the United States and for Germany and the UK and European Union. Instead of running off to Korea and China and Japan and India. They got so many laws on the books now, it's going to be illegal very, very soon to even talk about Jesus or the Bible. It'll be called hate speech. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so, League of Nations was disbanded. United States citizens didn't want us to join because they knew it was the, uh, it would have been fulfillment of Bible prophecy 
for the beast kingdom world government, one world government. And we're going to go over the Bible verses when I'm done with all this. So at the end of World War II, after they had disbanded the League of Nations, they created the United Nations. And of course, they're going to lie about this. But the, one of the, the very first acts, if not the first act, of the United Nations was the creation of the Israeli state in 1948 in Palestine. And guess what country was the very first country to recognize them? Soviet Communist Russia. Why does that not surprise me? They were the first country to recognize the Israeli state. You know who was second? U.S., from what I understand. Now, there are five countries on these, what they call the Security Council. They're like the big dogs. Communist Russia, the United States, France, England, and China. And for years, it was, I think it was Taiwan, but... Uh, they kicked out Taiwan and said, oh, oh we're going to recognize communist China and make them the uh, representatives of China. A lot of people don't know it, but in the Korean War in the 50s, communist Chinese troops killed American troops. General Douglas MacArthur, a war hero, he wasn't perfect. He made a lot of mistakes. He wanted to nuke communist China. But Harry S. Truman, I heard his name was Solomon, uh, got rid of him. No, we can't. We can't bomb communism. Why we're we're friends with communism. They're our buddies. You know, Wall Street. We we financed them. We we helped create them. But communist China killed U.S. troops in Korea. And from what I understand, they were in Vietnam, too. And by the way, Russian pilots were flying planes in Korea, too, shooting down American fighter pilots. Well, American planes, period. So, yeah. And every time MacArthur was, uh, because that was a UN operation, he had to submit his battle plans to the UN. So here it is, we're fighting the communists in Korea, and you're telling them your battle plans before you do it. So you're telling the communists, okay, we're going to attack the communists, and we're going to do it on this day, at this time, in this place. And you're telling them what you're going to do. And then they were setting up traps, and it's, yeah... Yeah, you get the idea. World government, really, really freaking brilliant idea. So, just think about it. The United Nations created the Israeli state. What does that tell you? Well, guess what? World government is going to need a king. One person to rule the whole thing. You think this guy, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the antichrist, whatever, he's going to create it? Or do you think it's already going to be in place, ready to go? It's going to be already there, ready to go. All he's going to have to do is step up and say, I am the king. Well, let me tell you what. There was a guy named David Spangler. He was director of the Planetary Initiative of the United Nations, he said, quote, the occult is the spiritual foundation of the United Nations. The stage is set for the coming one world government under one world leader. No one will enter the new world order unless he or she will make a pledge to worship Lucifer, unquote. Wow. And, um, of course, people will tell you, oh, Lucifer is a Latin word. It doesn't belong in the Bible. 
Well, you know what? There's a, uh, a group of people that call themselves Luciferians, and they worship Lucifer, and they know who Lucifer is, but you're going to tell me Christians don't? Really? Really? You don't know who? Yeah. Well, read Isaiah 14 if you don't know who Lucifer is, in the King James. And the modern Bibles, like the NIV, and the complete Jewish Bible, a Messianic Bible, so-called. They replace the word Lucifer with morning star. And so it's the morning star that fell from heaven, not Lucifer. It was the morning star that tried to kill God, not Lucifer, in the war in heaven. And then when you go to Revelation 22, guess who says he's the morning star? Uh, Jesus. Jesus. So is Jesus the morning star, Lucifer, who fell from heaven? Um, only if you're a Messianic Jew or if you read the NIV. Yeah. And the company that prints the NIV prints the Satanic Bible by the Church of Satan. Yeah. Yeah, really interesting, huh? Well, the United Nations, they have the World Health Organization. We'll talk more about that. They have the International Monetary Fund, where they take money from the U.S. and give it to dictators of third world crap holes, where the, you know, the leaders do the bidding of these people and then you know, they take all the money and probably put it in a Swiss bank account. I don't know. Money, this money never helps people. Never does. Uh, what else? They also have a police force. Perhaps you've heard of the UN Blue Helmets. Oh, yeah. There's been a lot of allegations that UN troops have uh, raped and murdered people, women, you know, and what have you, in uh, countries that they've invaded to uh, depose governments that oppose the UN's initiative. Do you know that China has been building infrastructure in Africa? Dams, roads, bridges, mines to mine uh, valuable minerals and metals. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And they have troops there. There's troops, Chinese troops in China, uh, uh, from China in Canada. Uh, they asked Trudeau if uh, they could put some troops there to protect their business ventures, their factories and food, food production places and what have you. And, of course... Trudeau says, oh, no problem, bring them in. Because China said they didn't trust the Canadian Mounted Police to protect their factories and what have you, processing facilities. So there's, oh, and by the way, I heard in New York City that there are Chinese police stations there too. I don't know how true it is. But Canada, I know it's true because I've read uh, the Canadian news sources. But in these third world countries, like for example, Africa, China goes in, builds all these infrastructure, and they have troops there. And China also has troops in the United Nations. And if a government in a place opposes the world initiatives or whatever, or they're not willing to go along with the program, well, Let's just say there's a civil war and the government gets deposed. Uh, a lot of people don't know it, but uh, when the start of World War II happened, the United States had a president called FDR, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Uh, his real name was Rosenfeld. Yeah, did you know he was a J? Oh yeah, he was. Absolutely. Can you imagine that? 
we had an antichrist for president. An antichrist for president. Yeah. And, of course, supposedly he died in office and then Truman took over. But Truman was cut from the same cloth. My dad actually said that FDR was a good president that did good things for us. He got us out of the Depression and blah, blah, blah. It's like, they're the ones that put us in the Depression to begin with. Whatever. Tesla wanted to uh, give us free electrical power. FDR uh, had a thing where he put people to work running copper wires all over the United States so that they can charge us for power. Tesla wanted to give us free power. And Dad thought that was a good thing that FDR electrified the country. Oh, people only knew. Oh, and by the way, Tesla was a Christian, people. He had clergy on both sides, grandfathers on both sides of his family. Yeah, he was not a greedy person. Uh, so many people stole and used his patents, and he never filed a claim against them because he wanted something good to come to people. Uh, because of pa Tesla, we got uh, radio, television, Um. Tesla invented a radio-controlled boat, believe it or not, back in the 20s or 30s, I forget. And uh, what else? He invented the uh, incon uh, the fluorescent bulb. Yeah, oh, and he invented the dynamo, uh, the uh, alternating current dynamo, which you know is electricity. You plug it into the wall socket. He's the one that invented all that stuff. But you don't hear about him. You hear about Edison, the thief, the liar. Edison uh, stole a lot of Tesla's ideas and made money on them and never shared zip with uh, Tesla. Greedy dogs, that's what they do. They don't believe in sharing because they're liars and thieves. And one day they will get what they deserve. Not soon enough for me, but I'm not the one running the show. But thing is, I was just as deserving as they were. So, the United Nations has a very large military force. And there are all kinds of places. So, can you imagine what would happen if, let's say there was power outage in the United States or and the, everything went dark and in I think it was 76 or 77 New York City was dark for three days and there were riots and looting and uh, the governor finally had to call out the National Guard police couldn't handle it can you imagine if we lost power for three weeks in the United States Refrigerators shut off. All the food goes bad. Grocery stores can't provide food because they don't have any electric. Cash registers don't work. Uh, no shipment of food. People are hungry. Can you imagine what would happen? Uh, either a planned event by evil ones or let's say, you know, EMP, electromagnetic pulse, supposedly, or... Maybe somebody hacked the electrical grid by the whoever is the current boogeyman of the month. Ooh, North Korea or Iran or Russia or whatever. You know, whoever it is. I mean, what would happen if the president, you know, said, uh, hey, we got to have, we got to restore law and order. I'm calling in UN troops. Well, who's part of the UN? China, communist China. They could send a hundred million troops, no problem. They got a population of 1,000, about 1,400 million people, of which more than, uh, more than half of them are males. So you'd only have to take like one in seven of their males and put them in the army. 
One out of seven. That's not even a big strain. That would be a third of the population of the United States. So, I don't know. Would they do that? Wouldn't surprise me if they did. But the, uh, the United Nations, like I say, they have a large military, and you're looking at the pictures, but they also have the World Health Organization. And they're going to decide your medical treatment. You ever heard the expression, my body, my choice? Well, that only applies if you want to murder your unborn child. When it comes to getting something into injected into your body, no, no, no. It's your body, their choice. Yeah. See, you're only allowed to murder your own child. So the who's going to decide who gets injected with what. And then the International Monetary Fund, um, they have countries borrow money. And what does the Bible say about the, uh, the borrower as servant to the lender? Some Bibles say the borrower is the slave of the lender. Uh, yeah. And if you don't pay the debt, well, we'll just send UN troops in and get rid of you. So, you know, there you go. But can you imagine, too? Oh, well, when Gorbachev was head of Russia, well, he was a figurehead. He, uh, he, said, he told the, uh, their Congress, the Supreme Soviet, he says, don't worry about uh, Glasnost and Perestroika, which is, you know, uh, which is where they claim, oh, well, we're going to tear down the Berlin Wall and, you know, communism collapsed. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. The communists just changed their names to socialists. And um, that's all they did. But he said that uh, we're going to lull the Americans to sleep. And then we're going to smash them with our closed fist. And let me tell you something. Russia, between Russia and China, their militaries could crush us. This little sideshow in Ukraine... All that's doing is killing off the whites. That's all it's doing. You know, I don't want to hear about Ukraine as kicking Russia's rear end. Bull. Russia's military is huge. When I was in Ger uh, Germany in the army, NATO uh, had a simulation. They said that Russia could have run over Germany, all Western Europe in three weeks crushed all the opposition. They, they had a military that was that large. And you're going to tell me a little country like Ukraine's kicking their butt? I don't think so. No. I'll guarantee you, I know who's getting killed over there. And it's not, uh, it's not the communists. And it's not the, uh, the, the people that go to uh, the sin of Gog. No, it's not. The United Nations is satanic. So, all right, let's take a look at some things. All right, let's go to Daniel chapter 7. Um, this ties right into the book of Revelation. Verse 1. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Belshazzar was the son of Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, the first three letters of his name is B-E-L, Bel, or Baal, which is a name of a satanic god. Can you imagine being named? Uh, you know, that's like taking your name and, and calling you Satan. Satan Shazar, or, you know, something like that. Or Lucifer Lazar Shazar. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. 
Then he wrote the dream and told the sum of the matters. Daniel spake and said, so he had a dream and he wrote it down. He said, I saw my vision by night. Behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. In a previous study I did, uh, when the Bible talks about the whore that sits on many waters, the Bible tells you that the waters are peoples, nations, languages, and tongues. When it's talking about the sea, it's talking about the sea of humanity. It's not talking about something rising up out of a Pacific or Atlantic Ocean. No, the sea of humanity. The four great bees came up from the sea, diverse one from another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. And behold, another beast, a second like to a bear, and raised itself up on one side, what do you want to bet it was on the left? And raised it up itself on one side. You know, the communists call themselves the left. Uh, little note here. During the French Revolution, all the communists were always on the left side of the auditorium. That's why they called them the left. So... Uh, and behold another beast a second like to a bear and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it and they said thus unto it arise devour much flesh I find it interesting that uh, the symbolism of Russia is a bear yeah and it devoured much flesh didn't it Millions, dozens of millions of people were murdered under communism. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, oh, I'm sorry, verse 6. After this, I beheld, and lo, another like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. And some people say that this is um, the Greek uh, uh, Macedonian general Alexander the Great and his Greek uh, commanders. Um, because when he died at a young age, his four generals uh, divided up his kingdom into four parts. I don't know. Daniel's a very hard book, my opinion. Verse 7, after this I saw in the night visions, behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong, exceeding, and it had great iron teeth. A fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. See, this is not like the first three beasts before it. This one is dreadful, terrible. And strong exceedingly. I mean, this beast is stronger than all of the other ones. And it had great iron teeth. If you look at the word iron, the first time the word iron appears in the Bible, it talks about one of the descendants of Cain, who was a uh, worker with iron. And what is steel made out of? Iron. So when you got steel ships, uh, swords, firearms, they're all made of iron. But this one, it says it had great iron teeth. So the first time iron's mentioned in the Bible, it's one of Cain's descendants. Yeah. So this beast is dreadful, terrible, strong, exceeding, had great iron teeth. It devoured, devoured, and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse. It was different. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it. And it had ten horns. 
ten horns. Keep that in mind. We're going to read about that in Revelation, about the ten horns. Verse 8. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots, and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. All right, so... Now, uh, this changes. Verse 9 changes. This is the end times, if you ask me, when Christ returns. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days... Who's the Ancient of Days? Christ. The Ancient of Days did see, sit, whose garment was white as snow. Revelation 1. White as snow, and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Christ is going to burn up his enemies with fire, people. I mean, it's going to happen. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. What books? The book of life, and the book of... not the book of life. Yeah. 11. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain. The by In Revelation, Paul, John calls this the beast. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. People, this is... This is the book of Revelation right here. I mean, it's it's tied right in. And if you haven't read, uh, uh, listen to my uh, uh, The Beast, Kingdom of the Beast, Economics, uh, Part 1. I, I don't cover this, but I cover it in Revelation. Um, verse 12. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. And I saw in the night visions, behold, one like the Son of Man. Jesus called himself the Son of Man all the time. The Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven. Oh yeah. And came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting, everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. So even though this last kingdom beast is going to be horrible, there's hope. I mean, I, I love the way the Bible always says, yeah, it's going to be bad, but there's hope. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions of my head troubled me. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of the things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, the fourth beast, which was diverse, it's different, which was diverse from all the others, exceeding dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured, break in pieces, and stamped the residue with his feet. This guy is going to, I mean, he's going to wipe everything out. And of the ten horns that were in his head, and of the other which came up, and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that speak very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, and prevailed against them. 
Now, I did a Bible study on horns recently. Horns represent government and power and judgment. You know, when they would blow the horn in battle, it signified it was a sound for everybody to gather together to prepare for war. I beheld in the same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the Ancient of Days came and judgment was given to the saints of the Most High and the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. Judgment's going to be given to the saints. Do you know the Bible says that we're going to judge angels? Oh yeah. Uh, um, 23. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. The fourth kingdom, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. And shall devour the whole earth. The whole earth. And shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Oh yeah, the whole earth, people. And the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws. Uh, has our calendar been changed? Oh yeah, a number of times. And they shall be given into his hand for a time, a year, and times, two years, and a dividing a time. So a time plus two times and a dividing of time is about three and a half years, people. I think the Bible says it's what, 1,240 days or 1,260 days or 42 months. Um, we read that in Revelation. Oh, yeah. But the judgment shall sit, they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. Christ is going to come for his kingdom. Satan's lease on this world is going to be over. And the kingdom and dominion and the great uh, greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall serve and obey him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my cogitations much troubled me and my countenance changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. Oh, and by the way, people, do you know that every country we've invaded in the last 30 some odd years um, did not have a central bank? Huh. Yeah, which was a plank of the Communist Party manifesto, the Communist Manifesto. A central bank. Yeah, the United States has a central bank. It's called the Federal Reserve. Um, it's a private bank, people. It's not even a government agency. It's a private bank. Um, they collect interest on the national debt, which is why the national debt will never be paid, because they collect interest on it. That's why the national debt keeps going up. So... All right, let's take a look at the, uh, remember in Daniel, you know, we were talking about the horns and what have you and the beast. So let's go to Revelation chapter 12, which ties in with Daniel. All right, let's go to Revelation 12. Oh man, I've read this so many times, but uh, yeah. Verse 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, if you don't know what this is a reference to, this is in reference to a dream that Joseph had. If you want, you can go to my channel, um, look at the magnifying glass, the search function, which is by um, on the right-hand side. You got to click on the arrow a few times. Type in Revelation 12, and I explain this in detail. But uh, da Joseph had a dream, and uh, he explains it. 
the woman clothed with the sun is Israel. The sun was Joseph's father, Israel. The moon was his mother. And the crown of 12 stars, oh, well, that was the 12 tribes of Israel. Verse 2, And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth, and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. It's funny how communism always has the color red as their color, right? Yeah. That is their uh, little deal. Haven't you ever heard communists being called reds? Oh, yeah. What color is China's flag? Red. They knew who their daddy is. Don't you? You know, you know what really makes me sad and angry? Uh, people that go to church that refuse to read their Bible. But boy, they can tell me what their favorite sports person's scores are. Oh, yeah, this... This quarterback, he threw 1,732 yards for uh, 72 touchdowns in the regular season. You know, idiot. But you can't tell me 10 books in the Old Testament. Or maybe 10 in the New Testament. Because you've never bothered to read them. But I'll tell you what, the enemy knows the Bible better than they do. That's what makes me sad. Yeah, the enemy knows the Bible better than the, the average churchgoer. But it's the way it goes. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon. Do you know China has a dragon festival every year? Oh, yeah. Having seven heads and ten horns. Ten horns. Ten horns. Where did we read that? Oh, that's right. It was in Daniel chapter 7. And seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail, the dragon, drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Uh, if you read Job 1, the stars of God were our angels. It's a figure of speech. You know, Jesus, uh, uh, Satan is called an angel of light. Paul called him an angel of light, yeah. And no marvel, for Satan is transformed into an angel of light. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast him to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. Uh, how about Cain with Abel? How about uh, King Herod that tried to kill Jesus? Yeah. And she, I believe this is Mary, brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. This is Christ, right? And the woman, the church, and the woman fled into the wilderness. This is the future, people. It's the future of the church. Not the pre-trib rapture lie. Which is... Uh, you know, the average churchgoer is going to be, they're going to be ending up calling Jesus a false Messiah. Because when they realize that they're going to have to die for their lukewarm faith, they're not going to stand. They are not going to stand. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where she hath a place prepared of God. That God has a place prepared for his bride, the woman. That they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. One thousand two hundred and sixty days. There's that twelve hundred and sixty days. Which is about forty two months. Which is a time times and a dividing a time. Three and a half years, people. Yeah. God's going to take his bride into the wilderness where she could be alone with him while the beast goes crazy with the world and God's going to feed them probably manna just like he did with Israel in the book of Exodus Moses in the wilderness oh yeah 
Verse 7. And there was, past tense, and there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought his angels and prevailed not. The dragon didn't prevail. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. That old serpent. Why is he called old? Because he's been around for a long time. And if you think Eve was in the Garden of Eden talking to a snake, uh, may I call your attention to verse 9 of chapter 12 of Revelation. No, she was talking to one of the most beautiful of God's creations, an angel. She wasn't talking to a snake. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels, the stars, were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation. Hallelujah for that. Salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accuseth them before our God day and night. And they, the church, they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The words of your testimony are very, very important, people. Jesus said, if you deny him before men, he would deny you before the Father and his angels. But if you acknowledge him before men, Jesus would acknowledge you before the Father and his angels. And I'm paraphrasing, but you get the idea. You deny Christ, he'll deny you. You lose your life for the gospel, you're going to gain eternal life in the kingdom. Period. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Do you love this flesh? I don't. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he hath but a short Time. Oh, yeah. And when the dragon saw that he was cast under the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle. I did a Bible study on eagles' wings, people. Right out of the book of Exodus, the Bible declares the Lord says he took Israel on the wings of a great eagle and took him out of Egypt into the wilderness. Figure of speech. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times, a year, two years, plus two years, and a half a time, three and a half years from the face of the serpent. 1260 days. Or how many days did I say? Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, 1,260 days. 1,260 days. It's just another way of saying it, right? Where she is nourished for a time and times and a half a time from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood. The flood of the dragon. Remember, people. What is the flood? So what are these waters? Well, the King James explains the King James. The modern Bibles don't do it, which is why they tell you, oh, don't listen to the King James Bible. It's old. It's mistranslated. They'll say uh, King James was a Mason. He loved little boys and all these other lies. Well, the King James explains the King James. The modern Bibles don't do that. Revelation 17, 15. And he said unto me, the waters, the sea, the waters, 
The waters which thou sawest where the whore sitteth, the whore, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. A lot of times when you see water or the, or the sea, people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. There you go. Revelation 12, 15. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman. What's happening today in the Western nations? The dragon is casting out of his mouth water as a flood. The flood of peoples and tongues and nations and multitudes to flood the woman. Isn't that happening everywhere? Open borders? Open borders only for Western nations. They don't have open borders for China, do they? No. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. And the earth helped the woman. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. There's going to be an earthquake swallowing up the flood of aliens, heathen aliens, in the cities probably. Because the earth's going to help the woman. Verse 17, And the dragon was wroth with the woman. He was mad. He was angry. He was PO'd. And went to make war. The dragon was wroth and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. God doesn't care if you keep the commandments. If you don't have Christ, or if you name the name of Christ, but you don't keep his commandments, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Both. Uh, what are the commandments? Oh, oh boy, I've read this a hundred times, but we're going to make it a hundred and one. Someone asked Jesus, what was the most important commandment in the law? And in Matthew 22, 36, we read, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Unless, of course, you go to the Seventh-day Adventist church, uh, Adventist church, and then they'll tell you, well, you got to keep the Sabbath. It's a requirement of salvation. Because Ellen White went to heaven, and she looked at the Ten Commandments, and the, the, seventh, the, 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 the Sabbath day commandment was glowing. Woo, it was glowing, telling me that it's the most important one of all. But that's not what Jesus said. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Huh. All right, let's read Revelation 13. Boy, I just read this. Revelation 13, verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. Didn't we read that in Daniel? Oh, yeah. And upon his horns, ten crowns, and upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like a leopard, right out of Daniel. And his feet were as the feet of a bear. And his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power. Read Job chapter 1. Satan has a certain amount of power. He caused a wind to come and destroy Job's son's home 
and killed his sons. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat, his throne, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast, the beast. Um, he's also called the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist. We covered that in part one, the economic 666, kingdom of the beast, economic 666, part one, right? Uh, and I saw one of his heads that were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. Should have died, but he was healed. It's a miracle, people. And all the world wondered after the beast. It's a miracle. He should have died with that head wound, but supernaturally he came to life. That's what you're going to be hearing from the world. Verse 4. And they worshipped the dragon. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And the answer is, in the flesh, nobody on the earth is going to be able to make war with the beast. The beast is going to be more powerful than probably all the armies of the earth combined and will rule and reign until Christ returns. Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months, twelve hundred and sixty days, time, times, and a dividing of time. The Bible explains the Bible if you let it, people. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God and to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. That's the church, people. And it was given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. Oh, yeah. He's going to kick their rear ends. And power was given him over all, all, A-L-L, -L, kindreds and tongues and nations. The whole world, people. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. If it's your lot in life to go to be like in Matthew 24, where you're taken to the councils to be tried. Hey, uh, we hear you're a Christian. Is that true? All you got to do to walk out of here alive is deny Jesus as Lord. Maybe spit on a Bible. I don't know. And we'll let you walk out of here and live. But if you don't, we're going to cut your head off. You know, I bet you in these mega churches with 5,000 members, I doubt if there'd be five people that'd be willing to do that. I could be wrong. I've been wrong many times before. Let's take a look at something real quick. Let's read Matthew 24 real quick. I mean, this ties right into all this stuff. Matthew 24, verse 1. And I got an entire playlist on Matthew 24, I think. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. 
And guess what? In 70 AD, Rome came and threw down every stone of the temple. They completely destroyed it. So when so-called people tell you that the Wailing Wall is part of the temple, they are basically telling you Jesus is a liar. I think they're the liars, but they're of their father, well, the father of lies, yeah. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So what's the signs of your second coming and the end of the world, Jesus? Verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed, pay attention, that no man deceive you. Deception is going to be very, very prevalent in the end times, people. Because Jesus, they're talking about the second coming and the end of this world. Jesus said, Don't be deceived. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. You know, since the creation of the United Nations, there's been more wars in this world than any other time in history period that I know of. See that ye are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences, hunger and disease, and earthquakes in divers places, earthquakes in many places. All these are the beginnings, the beginning of sorrows. This is only the beginning. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. What name is that? Yeshua HaMashiach? No, they love that name. No, the name of Jesus. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. They're going to kill you for the name of Jesus. And ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended. You know the pre-trib rapture crowd? They're going to be offended. What do you mean i got to die for Jesus? Billy Go Graham didn't say that to me. He told me we wouldn't have to worry about it. We're not going to be here. Jesus lied. He was a false prophet. He's a liar. He's a false Christ, false Messiah, they'll say. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Oh yeah. Those in church, and they're a false line sweet, oh, love your brother. Wait until they have to get their heads, the, the opportunity to have their heads cut off. They're going to betray you, and hate you. Verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity, sin, evil, and wickedness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. The love of many is going to wax cold because of all the evil in this world. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Uh, tell that to the eternal security, once saved, always saved crowd. But Billy Goat Graham told me that all I had to do was say a little sinner's prayer at one of his meetings and, and I'm eternally secure and God can't throw me in hell even if he wanted to. Wow. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Then ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. That's the man of sin standing in the holy place, the temple. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. 
when you see the man of sin in the temple proclaiming that he's God, this is what you're told to do. Verse 16, Then let them which be in Judea flee unto the mountains. Get the heck out of Dodge, people. Let him which is on the rooftop not come down to take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. People, you're not supposed to go back to the home and say, boy, I got to flee to the mountains. I got to take my uh, mountain boots and I got to take my winter coat. I got to grab some food and I got to grab my survival kit and my knife and my fire starter and my compass and my maps. No. Get the heck out of Dodge. As soon as you hear the man of sin proclaim that he's God, flee to the mountains. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray, pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Why? Because when Christ comes, he's going to come in the clouds like lightning in the east, shining on to the west. Every eye is going to see him. He's going to come in glory. I mean, that's how, you know, we covered that in the last study I did on the Kingdom of the Beast, part one. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, miracles, people, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Modern translation would be, you've been warned. Therefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Because when Christ comes back, there's going to be a whole lot of dead people. 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. After. Keyword. Shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So this has to happen before Christ returns. The sun's going to be darkened. Could be a volcano erupting thousands and thousands of tons of smoke and ash in the air. I don't know. And the moon shall not give her light. The, the moon's going to be blocked out. But when the stars fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens are shaken, boy, that's going to be one heck of a wake-up call. Verse 30. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a chariot, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Wow. Now we could keep reading this, you know. But I think we've got the general idea. All right, we're going to read from Matthew 10, starting in 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now, this is Jesus speaking, not Bob. 
But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. Wow. Who hangs out in the synagogues? Oh, yeah. What does it mean to be scourged? It means to be whipped. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. You know, don't when you're in prison, don't think about what you're going to say. For it shall be given you in the same that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, it's not you, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father of the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Why are the children going to be against the parents? Well, you sent them to college. Well, you know, they went to elementary school and they learned Darwinian evolution. They went to middle school, evolution. Went to high school, evolution. Went to college, more evolution. 16 years of government education, antichrist education. And you wonder why going to church for 35, 45 minutes on Sunday, why they turn against you. Yeah. And the brother shall deliver up, deliver up the brother to death, and the father of the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, the name of Jesus who is Christ. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. If Jesus Christ suffered and died, you think you're better than him? You're going to fly away in the pre-trib rapture? Boy, where did you learn that from? You didn't learn it from the Bible. No, you learned it from your Billy Goat Graham preachers, your Masonic preachers. Yeah, that's where you learned it. You didn't learn it from the Bible. All right, let's go back to Revelation 13. In verse 10. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and faith of the saints. If they want to kill you because you're skin color, fight to protect your family. If they want to kill you for your faith in Christ, go willingly. That's how I read this. But choice is yours. 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Yeah, he's pretending like he's the lamb of God, but he's the devil, he's the dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, miracles, so that he maketh fire, fire, F-I-R-E, fire, come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Anybody that opposes this army, this, this creature, there's going to fire come down from heaven and burn them up. Where else did this happen? In the book of Job, fire came down from the sky and killed some of Job's people. Elijah, when he confronted the prophets of Baal, B-A-A-L, he brought down fire from heaven and devoured 50 soldiers and the captain, the 51. And I believe that this false prophet is going to claim to be Elijah. 
one of the two witnesses in Revelation is going to be Elijah. I did a study on Elijah, an hour and 40 minutes. Probably one of the most important Bible studies you'd ever want to listen to in your whole life. And I'm not bragging, people. I put so much time into doing this stuff. I don't do it for my health. I don't get paid. You think I get people send me money every day to do this stuff? No. You know, somebody might send me once a month. Somebody might send me a little something, you know. And those of you that have, thank you. But I don't do this for the money. You know, I've had people offer me money and chances are they're probably worse off than I am. You know, feed your kids. I don't need your money. I really don't. I mean, I'm not, I'm far from rich. I worked my whole life since, out, since high school, 16 years old. And before, I used to cut grass as a teenager in elementary school, sixth grade. Go around the, the neighborhood and people have high grass and I knock on the door. Excuse me, do you need your grass cut? And people actually stiff a kid who cut their grass. Well, yeah, they usually had names like, uh, well, let's just say uh, they were Sabbath keepers, but they didn't believe in Jesus. So, all right. And he doeth great wonders, miracles, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Who's going to be able to stand against fire coming down from heaven and burning everything up? You think an army is going to be able to stand against this? No. No. Verse 14. And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live. So not only is this kingdom going to be military with a world government, but it's going to be religious. Oh yeah. Now, my guess is there will be some kind of an economic crash with famines, and some kind of massive disease. Somebody pointed out that when there's massive deaths, it will help trigger, uh, it will help not trigger, but uh, mark the beginning of the tribulation. And I believe that. There's verses in the Bible where a quarter and a third of the world will die. Does it have anything to do with the medical experiments going on? I don't know. Could be. But suppose that there was a crash, economic crash, no food, uh, massive disease, and a world leader came and wars, and a world leader comes, takes control of the United Nations, a king that they will claim to be a descendant of King David. And he stops the wars and he leads the world into what they call peace and prosperity and lead us out of this mess that's been made. And then he says, well, we need to build a temple for the God of Abraham. And then one day he goes to the temple and proclaims, I am God. As soon as you see that, that's the warning that Daniel gave about the abomination of desolation. That's when it's your cue to flee to the mountains. Get out of town. As soon as you hear that, don't go back to the house and gather up your stuff. I mean, when you see all this stuff going on, you should already have the stuff with you, like a backpack or something. I don't know. Paul warned in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And this is why they hate Paul. Because Paul gives a warning. Paul knew his stuff. Paul was a trained rabbi. Oh yeah. Paul knew his stuff. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, 
by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is this talking about? The second coming. And by our gathering together unto him. That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Isn't that what Jesus said? Take heed, be not deceived, be not deceived. Oh yeah. Paul tells you the same thing. Don't be deceived. For that day, what day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And boy, we're here. There's a falling away in the faith. And that man of sin be revealed. The man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. The beast, the antichrist, by whatever name. Perdition means to fall. Fall from where? From heaven. Didn't Satan fall from heaven? Absolutely. The son of perdition. The son of the satanic seed. The man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped. So that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. There you go, right there. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? Oh, yeah. And now ye know that uh, what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And I believe that is Michael the angel. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power, miracles, and signs, and lying wonders, power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie. Wow. That they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks all way to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, God hath from the beginning chosen you. Did you know Christians are the chosen people? Did you know that? You wouldn't know it listening to TBN. You wouldn't know that listening to the 700 Prophets of Baal Club. You wouldn't know that listening to Billy Goat Graham. But you'll learn if you listen to me. Well, don't listen to me. Listen to Paul. Listen to Jesus. Don't listen to me. I'm just repeating what they said. Because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go back to Revelation 13. Let's go to verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwelleth therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. Revelation 13 and verse 14, 15. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, 
that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. So this beast kingdom is going to be economic, it's going to be military, and it's going to be religious. And there's not going to be any place for Jesus. None. 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark, a mark in, in, all the modern Bibles say on, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. I've heard people say, oh yeah, the, uh, you know, the injection is the mark. I don't think so. Because they're not injecting it in the right hand or in the forehead. It's not good. But that's what I can say. 17. And that no man might bar your cell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So you got the mark, the name, or the number. They're all the same. Here's wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 603 score and 6. 660 and 6. Boy, how many times have I read that? It's important. You know, when I was in college, a professor even told me, he says, if something's mentioned two or three times in a class, write it down, memorize it, because it's going to be on the test. Well, guess what? Here it is, people. The Bible is our instruction book, and there's going to be a test. And he that shall endure unto the end shall be saved. Words of Christ. Revelation 17, and we're going to close this out pretty soon. Oh, wow, it's two hours. Um, I've heard people tell you that the great city of Revelation 17 is Rome. Uh, they're wrong, but I will prove it before I finish this study. So the kingdom of the beast is going to be economic. There will probably be a, a crash, an economic crash. They'll replace it with digital. After all, paper money is currency it's dirty money right it spreads disease and we god forbid you know you get covid from spreading you know touching cash digital money man that's the way to go right it's going to be economic it's going to be political and military absolutely the the beast is going to be head of the world government and it's going to be religious there's going to be worship involved. And if you don't do it, you die. Didn't we just read that? Yeah, we did. Revelation 17 and verse 1. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Remember, the waters are peoples. Didn't we read that? Yes, we did. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. See, God wants a bride, but the world wants a whore. God never went to Rome to make a covenant, did he? No. Did God ever send a uh, prophet to Rome? Not to my knowledge, not in the Bible. Who's the great whore? Well, we're going to decipher that by the time I get through reading, uh, soon after I finish reading chapter 17. Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, spiritual fornication, right? And the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. This is what we read in Daniel, right? And the woman, the whore, was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, 
having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. And if you look at purple, scarlet, gold, precious stones, and pearls, uh, you will find out that this is what the Levitical priests, the colors of the Levitical priests in the book of Leviticus, what they had. And of course, they'll point at Rome. Oh, that's the Roman priests. But, you know, they just copied from the book of Leviticus, right? All right. Revelation 17, 5. And upon her forehead was writ was a name written mystery babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth hmm and i saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of jesus and when i saw her i wondered with great admiration who killed the saints? Who killed the martyrs of Jesus? And of course, Rome did do some of that stuff. But did Rome kill Stephen? Did Rome kill the apostles? Did Rome kill Jesus? The answer is no. No, they didn't. Pilate wanted to release Jesus. But he couldn't. Well, he wouldn't. He could have, but... That wasn't part of the plan. Verse 7. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. Perdition means to fall. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world did you know your names were written in the book of life from the beginning of the world absolutely that's election chosen people boy they hate that do you know there's entire groups of baptists that preach against uh election yeah they don't believe in election. Well, unless, of course, you're talking about the Antichrist over in the Middle East. Oh, yeah, those are the elect. The Antichrists are the elect, they'll tell you. Well, I know who they work for. And it's not Jesus. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. Now, I've heard people say, well, you know, there's seven continents or seven mountains, right? Well, guess what? Rome is on seven hills. But guess what? So is Jerusalem. Did you know that? Jerusalem was known as the city on seven mountains. What? Seven hills of Jerusalem are the Mount of Olives. Didn't Jesus go to the Mount of Olives all the time? Yeah. Mount Scopus, the Mount of Corruption. The Mount of Corruption, I think that's where they uh, sacrifice their children. Mount Ophel, O-P-H-E-L. The original Mount Zion, the new Mount Zion, and the hill on which the Antonio Fortress was built. Huh. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a, from what I understand, Moscow's built on seven hills. Seattle, Microsoft, seven hills. From what I understand, uh, Constantinople, which was modern day Istanbul, which was capital of the Ottoman Empire, Muslim, was seven hills. I don't know. Look into it. Make an interesting study, right? Yeah. Um, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. 
And there are seven kings, five, are, well, remember, seven heads, right? Seven kings, five are fallen, one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seventh, and goeth into perdition. And the seven horns which thou sawest are ten kings, horns, kingdoms, ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive powers, power as kings one hour with the beast. These shall have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. The, and these, uh, these shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree, and give their kingdom unto the beast, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is, the, is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now the Antichrist is going to be sitting in the temple of God. Is that going to be built in Rome? No. No. It's going to be built in Jerusalem. There's just no other way around it. But what can I tell you? All right, so um, let's see. Now, what about this Babylon? Well, let's take a look. The physical Babylon of Nebuchadnezzar was destroyed and was never to be rebuilt. But there is a spiritual Babylon, which I believe I'm going to be able to prove is end time Jerusalem from the Bible alone. Now think about it. Everybody says, oh, Jerusalem, that's the city of God. Well, yeah, but you're going to have a temple there in the end times, which is a denial of everything Jesus did on the cross. The man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, is going to be sitting in it, proclaiming that he's God. Is Jerusalem known for worshiping Jesus? No, absolutely not. Now it's a whore, right? So let's read a few excerpts. Uh, Revelation 18, 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying... Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. Verse 24. And in her, Babylon, was found the blood of prophets, the blood of prophets, the blood of prophets. When did Rome shed the blood of prophets in the Bible? Uh, never. Never. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So Babylon was responsible for the blood of prophets. Revelation 16, 6. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, for thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. They murdered God's servants, and God's going to turn their waters to blood. You guys want blood? I'm going to give you blood, God will probably say. Maybe say. I don't know. Revelation 17, 6. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. Mystery Babylon killed the prophets. Period. Jesus speaking in Luke chapter 13, verse 33. Words of Christ in red. And I quote, Nevertheless, I, Jesus, I must walk today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be, for it cannot be 
that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem, not Rome. Do you get the picture? Everybody that tells you Rome is a false prophet liar. They may not realize it, but they are nonetheless. How about Jesus in Matthew 23 to 37? I think Jesus trumps uh, Paul and Bob and everybody else. And I quote, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stoneth them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Jesus tried to gather his people under his wings, and nope, they wouldn't have it. The two end-time witnesses of God are mentioned here. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies... Elijah and somebody else, maybe Enoch, maybe Moses. I'm partial to Enoch, but some people say Moses. I don't know. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Remember, Mystery Babylon is called the great city. Here it says, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city. The end time witnesses are going to go to Jerusalem to preach. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. The Bible never says anything good about Egypt. Never. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom. Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Where was Jesus crucified? Uh, Rome. I don't think so. He was crucified in Jerusalem. And of course, people will say, oh, well, he wasn't crucified in Jerusalem. He was crucified outside. Well, what was the nearest city? Uh, Jerusalem, which was probably a stone's throw away. Jesus, my Lord, was crucified in Jerusalem, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Not in Rome, not in Mecca, not in the USA. So when you people hear people say Rome, Mecca, or the U.S. is Mystery Babylon, they're idiots. They're idiots. They're liars. They haven't, they're not being led of the Spirit. So do we believe Jesus or commentaries by mere men? How about Paul? Who killed Christ? 1 Thessalonians 2, verses 14 through 16. Uh, I might be able to get arrested for saying this in Florida because of the new law. Who knows? This is hate speech, right? For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. Are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus. What? Even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and they please not God, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for their wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. Can anybody show me when Rome or Islam killed the prophets in the Bible? Uh, no. No. Matthew 23, 34. Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth 
from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Archias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Who's Jesus talking to here? The Roman soldiers? No. Verse 36, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. Wow. Matthew 23, 37, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee. How often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Jerusalem, your house is left unto you desolate. Matthew 18, 24, And in her, Babylon, was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth, Babylon was responsible for the blood of prophets. Wow. Do you get the point? I think so. I hope so. And by the way, look up the Babylonian Talmud. Talmud means learning. So that means Babylonian learning or learning from Babylon, mystery Babylon. It's the oral traditions that Jesus condemned over and over and over. He says, why do you uh, make the word of God of none effect by your traditions? That's what he was talking about. When they left Babylon to return to the promised land, they brought Babylon with them. The tradition of the elders is what they called it. I mean, don't look at Rome. Don't look at Mecca. Don't look at Washington, D.C. or London. Keep your eyes on Jerusalem. Because one day, the man of sin will sit in the temple of God. And he didn't do it in 70 A.D. because we... we haven't we're going to see jesus come in the clouds of glory every eye is going to see him period and that hasn't happened yet so all blessings praise glory and honor in jesus precious name amen